maybe some of us saw this coming from a mile away and it would have been somewhat difficult not to, uh, especially if you've seen the World Health Organization's events 201 and in this staged scenario that we've now all kind of been uh, invited to participate in without even knowing it, in, in my opinion. But in that staged scenario, they were saying that people online posting misinformation or more importantly, disinformation more purposefully uh, endangering and being toxic and, and fear-mongering, giving people false info deliberately with the most malicious intention uh, that these people could be fined. And um, even receiving, uh, they, they even said in the scenario that people were receiving prison time as well as being penalized for providing false information. So now, of course, we're seeing this brought into fruition. We're on this website. It's called Let's Talk About It. LTAI.info, working together to prevent terrorism. And I called this out. I knew this would happen. I knew that they would say that anybody that's fear mongering, giving false information about the vaccines, uh, about anything related to, you know, what the supreme established authority and the unquestioned facts or unquestionable facts, uh, you know, the, ma the, the mass consensus public narrative that's really being projected out by mass media. If anything challenges that, then it would end up just being called terrorism and uh, you will literally be punished and uh, even you know thrown in a freaking box, um, you know, serving jail time for breaking that law and for being a terrorist. And now we're seeing this. We're seeing this come to fruition. Now, I want to take you through this website. All right. I want to take you through the whole website. So um, if you really want to see what's on here. And we can like look at the propaganda and uh, really see what's going on. So we go down here and we've got those three sections above, which we'll go to in a second. So stay safe online. While we are self-isolating and socially distancing due to coronavirus, we will all become more reliant on communicating online. Read through our advice for parents, guardians, and carers to make sure you and your family stay safe online. Spotting the signs. Do, do, do. Individuals can be drawn towards the process of radicalization. So that's the new buzzword now. You're radical. People can, individuals can be drawn towards this process of radicalization in a number of ways, many of which may overlap. See, many of which may overlap. So already you can tell they're casting a pretty general net of all these different ways that could overlap. And it's a process of ra radicalization. So if you go into any of these numerous ways that might overlap of behaving, of, of researching different information, even talking to people who are presenting this information that challenges the status quo report, um, that would probably be one of these number of ways which overlap and that could be uh, distinguished as you partaking in the process of radicalization. And people will be trained just like Stockholm sheep, uh, this big brother world where everyone can just turn into an Agent Smith now. People are being trained now to spot the signs of someone that's entering that process. Uh, anyone that's in any of those situations overlapping where people uh, are either, you know, just talking about different ideas and what's going on. Uh, people are watching the documentaries and, and being too inquisitive. Oh no, they're entering this process of radicalization. Better, better call the authorities. So view the list of potential vulnerabilities in individual cases of concern. Do you have concerns? Uh, have concerns or need advice? Talk to the police. If you need further advice, you can also contact your local authority safeguarding team. Now, all of these are just happening. First, they started uh, deleting full accounts and posts regarding uh, certain content they didn't like, especially, if, interestingly enough, anything talking about 5G as linked with the virus. And that's, I'm not suggesting anything, I'm just saying that they just deleted all of those things. So first they're just censoring things without any actual prior established reason for it. It's just all kind of ad lib, uh, spontaneous, uh, you know, new legislation that they just seem to be enacting without even asking the people, people having much say. And now suddenly the next wheel being turned in motion, the next cog in this machine of completely silencing people and completely, you know, just filling in all those big gaps with just their narrative. And I'm talking about the Supreme Established Authority of unquestionable facts. And it will be unquestionable because now, if, you know, if somebody expresses, if anyone enters a process of radicalization, expresses concern and has any questions, 
if they're questioning the facts, if they want to consider information outside of what is presented, you should be concerned and you should call the police. Um, so this goes on and let's just have a quick look at the partners of this. Okay, let's look at the partners. I'm curious. Our partners, below are details of other local and national organizations that you may find helpful. NSPCC, online safety, protecting children from radicalization, advice for adults or worried about a child. So radicalization is going to be the new thing. Okay, there's always these, these buzzwords. Um, we're here to protect children from harm. It can be hard to know when extreme views become something dangerous and the signs of radicalization aren't always obvious. The thing is that is so ironic is this itself is an extreme view followed Furthermore, by extreme action, I mean totally censoring to the point where it becomes a punishable crime to become cautious and about and uh, report to the authorities. That is an extreme view. Saying that you can only buy from the vendor um, these prescribed facts and these articles of truth unquestioned. And if you dare question it, then that is an offense and that's dangerous and that's worth reporting and being punished. That is an extreme view. Correct me if I'm wrong. But to rule, you know, it shouldn't be dangerous to simply consider information abroad. One should be allowed to make up their own mind and develop that uh, sense of logic and critical thinking to be able to discern from bullshit and truth. But now we're just going to have sh bullshit shoved in our faces. Um, and if we even discuss, if we have any issue with it, and some of it strikes us clearly as bullshit, and we want to look for alternative, uh, you know, perspectives on what's actually going on, no, that's too extreme. That's too extreme. You just have to listen to that one side. That's a more fair and balanced way and more safe way to go about this. Oh my God. Okay, so I'd be interested as to who funds these people. Who funds the NSPCC? If anyone wants to post below, if anyone wants to look that up, who funds them? Wouldn't be surprised if the World Health Organization is in there or Bill or... Uh, we would just be interested to see who's there. Vote for schools and water reading. So it's all about... Protecting the children. And this is the soft spot. This is the same way that they turn people against anti-vaxxers. They, they, they always say, just like Simpsons, think of the children. And they, they evoke this sense of contempt for anyone that they paint this picture is endangering the lives of children. First, they're endangering them by saying, no, the vaccines are actually dangerous. Don't do it. And they're presenting propaganda saying, well, no, that's dangerous because vaccines are the solution. They're totally fine. And anyone that says their kids shouldn't have it are presenting, you know, danger to those children, and neglect and all this. So they arouse contempt in people. They incite these feelings, you know, by, based on the propaganda they're putting out. Now they're saying, oh, these people, they're a hazard to children's mental health. They're misleading them and skewing their minds, filling it with all this toxic garbage. And now that's going to be the new thing of radicals being overly radical and radicalizing children, just like the anti-vaxxers are putting children in danger and misleading people with false information. It's the same thing. And they're using children as the crux, as the main, you know, um, educate against hate. This is the thing. They're saying educate against hate. And they've got the little symbol there, crossing out the hate. Um, this website gives teachers, parents, school leaders, practical advice, information on protecting children from extremism and radicalization. I wonder when these websites came up and when this particular initiative of this terminology started to be used uniformly across them all. I wonder. Uh, and that's the thing, educate against hate. This is, is a very backhanded, sneaky way of pretty much promoting hate for those who are simply questioning um, the prescribed facts by the SEA of uh, you know, unquestionable facts, right? If you question that, they're putting all this up now, making out that, you know, you're a radical, endangering children. And how is that going to make people feel? It's probably going to make people loathe you and judge you and want to call the authorities when they see you simply talking and thinking outside the box. So that seems to me a little bit extreme, extremism. And since that seems a bit like radicalization to create this perception that only the official doctrine being indoctrinated and propagated can be accepted. And if you question it, then you're the radical, then you're the extremist for not obliging, quiet, obliging and complying quietly and obediently to our very one-sided dictatorship style. We tell you the facts. And if you question it, you're being an extremist and a radicalist. Right. Parents are Parents are the experts in uh, digital family life and more about providing information and support and blah, blah, blah. Small steps. Far right hatred and division to counter far right 
So this is what I would call far left censorship and division. They're dividing people. They're making people report anyone um, using this far left, um, you know, suspicion and division tactic to make people suspect that these people are actually doing it wrong. And this could be, like I said, like they described earlier, these different ways can overlap that people are entering radicalization. So even researching different things, like I said, talking, going, going to sites where people are presenting uh, alternative news by the people, for the people, not just by conglomerate industries with vested interests and conflict of interest in what they're reporting. Um, now that's going to be something that we can be suspicious against. And that's very left-right, uh, left-wing, uh, far-left suspicion and division tactics. Exit UK. We are former members of the far right who know what it's like to feel disillusioned. Uh, we wanted see. That's the other thing. Yeah, don't trust in these. That's the other. Now they're associating far right radicalists. That's going to be the term you're going to be hearing. These far right extremists. These right. These far extreme right wing. You know. Uh, misinformers and radicalists. That's what you're going to be hearing. Uh, and these guys are identifying with them. We used to be these far right people, but you know, we know what it's feel like to be disillusioned because we've since be woken up. We've since become enlightened and we're not like those far, far right radicalists anymore. We wanted out and we eventually got out. We're not, we're not the police and we're not here to judge. Totally sounds like it, my dudes. Totally sounds like you're not here in any way to uh, you know, report anything to the police based on judgment and suspicion. No. Nah. So how is it how it's possible to leave the far right with our help? It's not easy, but we're here to help you every step of the way. So if you're too far away from not buying the subs, uh, prescribed narrative, if you're not subscribing to that 100% unquestionably to the supreme established authority of unquestionable facts, if you're not just accepting it quietly, then that means you're on the far right, and it's not easy to come back to our side of the fence, you know, to get back in this pen of indoctrination, but we'll help you every step of the way, I'm sure you will. Equality Teach. Equality Teach is a not-for-profit organization providing high-quality interactive training and support on issues of equality, diversity, and inclusion. That's interesting, because, like, equality and diversity and inclusion means you only embrace people, and you're pretty much saying, you know, don't report or be cautious or suspicious, uh, don't be hateful about it. these people... Um, who aren't radicalists and far right wing extremists? Um, you know, if if you're in being if you're included, because they're saying here, you know, this whole thing of equality, diversity, inclusion. But now they're they're excluding, they're excluding anyone that happens to question the status quo. Um, this doesn't sound like equality or diversity. If you diverse and you're divergent to the official narrative then you won't be included in what is deemed legal behavior and normal, uh, acceptable behavior. If you're too diverse, you won't be included and you're not going to have the same equal rights because you will receive penalty and punishment and maybe go to prison eventually, I suspect. So these people claim to support issues of equality, diversity, and inclusion if, you know, you're on the right side. Sorry, the left side. And if you happen to question the narrative then you're diverging, you're divergent, and you will be excluded and you will be punished and not given the same equal rights. So even in itself, what these people are signed up for here and what they're doing and supporting goes against and contradicts very hypocritically the very principles and of the premise that they serve to be built upon. <sighs> Makes your hair turn white, it really does. Kick, pathway to recovery. Kick It Pathways to Recovery provides cultural adverse, culturally sensitive help, advice, support, and mentoring for anyone suffering from the effects of drugs or alcohol addiction, dependency, or abuse. And I suppose they're going to say that eventually these people are going to associate with radicalists, maybe too much drug abuse. And that's why they're a little bit, a little bit tinfoil hat crazy. Reveal Theatre. Is this where all the crisis actors? Oh, no, no, no. That, you know, they don't reveal that stuff. Reveal Theatre used documentary theatre and drama intervention techniques to explore complex issues affecting British society, particularly young people today, promoting open-mindedness, tolerance, and understanding. <laughs> we aim to explore, challenge, and resolve. Yeah, open-mindedness, tolerance, and understanding. That's totally, totally what this is about. We totally allow and promote open-mindedness, Tolerance and understanding, except for when it comes to questions. Um, no questions allowed. Odd, odd, odd arts. 
deliver some issue-based creative programs with vulnerable and excluded gaps. So there's a lot going on behind this. <laughs> and they're kind of tackling all different fronts of like entertainment, art, education, drug assistance, health, right? Um, health facilitation. So there's a different a few different fronts they're tackling at the same time this the same common kind of message and cause. Connect Futures, training and research for the pr pr prevention of extremism and <laughs> And exploitation. See, this is exploitation. This is extremism. This is the, this is the thing. You, you know, when you argue with somebody, and the thing that they're doing, they start accuse you of doing. And it's 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 smart that people do this. It's smart that people accuse you hypocritically of doing the exact same thing that they're actually doing at that point in time. Because then, if you call them out on their behavior and what they're actually doing, and you say, "Hey, no, hang on a second, you're the one doing this to me. Thank you very much." They're just gonna say, "Oh, phew, that's easy for enough. You're just you're just taking what I said and throwing it back in my face. Come up with an argument of your own. You know what I mean? It's like eight mile. The hell, eight miling it. Like if I call out all the flaws first, then if you call them out, it seems redundant. And if I accuse you of doing it, then it seems like just a a cowardly, uh, you know, scapegoat method for you to turn the tables and try to blame that same thing on me. Then it looks like you're the one projecting." On, and being a hypocrite for calling the other person out on what they're doing because they're the first that beat you to it and they're the ones that accuse you of doing the thing they're doing. If you call them out on doing it, it seems like you're the one that's being defensive and hypocritical. So that's what they're doing here. Like extremism and exploitation are on the rise in the UK and abroad. Yeah, abroad. I see a lot of people getting on this bandwagon right here in the site, uh, getting on board abroad with this exploitation of people who, you know, are, are vulnerable of mining and literally going to buy into this shit. We believe that uh, both can be prevented at grassroots level by empowering people. Yeah, by empowering people that are on your side of the fence and disempowering those who are merely questioning and sending in different information than the official account. Yep. Because no speculation or theory is allowed anymore. You just have to swallow the facts uh, as gospel. When people feel isolated and marginalized, they can resort to extreme behavior patterns as a way of regaining control of themselves and their surroundings. And that's, I'm sure, where the whole drug thing will tie in eventually. Our research has shown that these patterns can be broken if spotted early. That's why we dedicated our lives to help leaders and educators identify these before they become a threat. Yeah, that's why we've dedicated our lives to um, help leaders and, uh, you know, propaganda, propagators uh, with their propaganda to better identify those who are threatening, uh, you know, public relations management and uh, the public narrative that is being pushed out by mainstream media. Yeah, um, we've totally dedicated our lives to helping the leaders uh, pretty much achieve whatever they set out to achieve and the propaganda passed down the line to be spread around, to you know lay down the tracks, to prime people to normalize uh, these changes, to help people accept what's gonna come and, th and think that it's in their best interest, totally. We've dedicated our lives to making sure people swallow all of that as truth. And uh, anyone that challenges it and actually makes people think, well, maybe these tracks being laid down are going to take you to a place just like the Jews that you're not going to like. Um, nah, nah, that's a threat. That's a threat to our you know, establishment and what we're trying to build here. So we'll legalize that. And it's PCC, protecting children from radicalization, advice for adults worried about a child. We're here to protect children from harm. It can be hard to know when extreme views become something dangerous. Well, it's not hard for me to see when extreme views are dangerous. I already know that this is dangerous. What is happening right here is dangerous. That's pretty obvious to me. There's nothing ambiguous about it. And the signs of radicalization aren't always obvious. It might be nothing. It might be something. See, this, this, once again, they're saying that there's overlap. They're saying that it might be obvious or might be something, maybe not. So they're making it very general. So anyone with, and, and dabbling in any shade of gray, and by by that statement I mean anyone that's not accepting this black and white account distributed to us, prescribed and expected to be subscribed to blindly without question. If you question it, okay, um, and in, in any way, if you adopt a gray mentality and you try to find the balance and look on truth on all sides. You know, it doesn't matter how much you're dabbling in that gray and how much, even if you're just slightly refusing the black and white account and you're just a little bit questioning the narrative, that can be reported as suspicious behavior. You know what I mean? So that's interesting. So that's the first part. We've looked at the parters and what they allegedly stand for. Let's go back to the home. 
Now there's three sections here, and I think I'm gonna I'm gonna make another video for most of this. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna look at it because I know that cross the line has quite a bit in it, and I'm gonna do in my next video cross the line, and that actually just pretty much it outlines where the line is drawn and what these people who look like they can be victims look like. The kind of people that are susceptible and who are vulnerable to being radicalized by this terrible terrorist misinformation. Oh my god. So I know there's quite a bit of information there and I'm going to do that in the next video. Um, let's just look at contact just in case. Let's just see. As I said, I'm going to do a cover on the site. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. If you want to report any suspicious terrorism concerns, there you go. See? Terrorism. Bang. Bam. Simply questioning the status quo. Terrorism. Bam. You've seen something online that supports directs or glorifies terrorism, including websites, films, or images. Brilliant. So it's not even people saying something outright um, on, on the front line, sh shouting out these statements, writing up their own uh, you know, ideas. Now if you see any, anything that supports it, so if anyone shares or glorifies terrorism, even if it's just an article, a website, a film, a documentary. And keep in mind that terrorism here is anything that's misinformation that's dangerous and it's going to radicalize people um, again, you know, against vaccinations. Even this will be included. Everything that's happening now, that would be deemed radical behavior if you're questioning um, where you know the powers that be want things to go. So they will call it terrorism. And anything you share giving counter-information even if it's based in fact and presented in a neutral and reasonable fashion, it's still going to be marked as suspicious and suspect. How do you feel about that? If you live in Wales, share your concerns about radicalization here. So this is in Wales at the moment. But I guarantee this is going to spread around. this Because the World Health Organization discussed this um, and as if it was already a reality, like like they already knew where things were going to go and, and how they were going to respond. So this is all going to come in place, and I'm reading this because this sh should concern the world, because even though now it just concerns Wales, it's going to concern a lot more than just Wales. Let's look at staying safe online. If there's not too much here, we'll quickly cover it, and then we'll... um. Okay, there's a bit here. So I'm going to make another video for the next two parts for Let's Go... Let's go back. We're going to make another video to cover cross the line and what is uh, what is this channel and what is prevent. Oh, there's a few things here. What is channel? That's, that's funny. What is channel? Okay, does this have much information? This doesn't look like it has too much information. We'll finish on this. What is channel? A collaborative support initiative. Channel provides support across the country to those who may be vulnerable to being drawn into terrorism the overall aim of the program is early intervention and diverting people away from the risk they may face channel uses existing collaborations between partners to support individuals and protect them from being drawn into terrorism take a moment to watch the introductory video uh to the channel below okay let's let's give it a bit of a watch shall we let's give it a little bit of a view What is Channel? The Channel program aims to provide support to individuals who may be vulnerable to radicalization. Who is it trying to help? Channel is aimed at individuals who may be at most risk, whatever section of society they may be from. There are many reasons why individuals are vulnerable and their circumstance, experiences or state of mind could have an influence. For example, they may have lost interest in other friends and activities, materials or symbols associated with an extremist cause, feelings of grievance and injustice, a need for identity, meaning and belonging, a desire for status, been influenced... <laughs> a need for identity, meaning and belonging. <laughs> yeah, be careful of those people. Sorry. Oh my God, sorry. ...or controlled by a group. Vulnerable individuals may be targeted either directly by terrorist recruiters or indirectly by material on the internet and social media. How does Channel work? Channel is organized by your local authority and works with mainstream services such as education, employment, housing, police, as well as the local community. The three key stages are 
one. Identify individuals at risk of being drawn into extremism. Two, assess the nature and extent of that risk and three, develop the most appropriate support plan for the individuals concerned. Who makes the referrals? Referrals can come from a wide range of people and partners and could include youth offending teams, social services, health, police, education, and local communities. So already there, you've got a wide range of, you've got people, the local community, that's Big Brother, you've got health, so World Health Organization, CDC, um, that can also diagnose what cl classifies radical behavior and those vulnerable to it. Um, police and all the mandates and regulations put in, in place for that. Um, youth control, like pretty much across the board, everything that controls the major aspects of the population. Um, all these different channels that can be pretty much equipped with the authority to class you as uh, being at risk to radicalization or even being a radical. So that's nice. Individuals referred to channel are not criminalized at any stage and will not end up with a criminal record unless they commit a criminal offense. Participation in channel is voluntary. It requires consent from an individual or their parent if it is a child. What support is offered? Each referral is reviewed on an individual basis. Support is always tailored to the specific needs of the individual. It could include mentoring, anger management, life skills and education, constructive leisure activities such as sport, signposting to mainstream services such as education, employment or housing. The overall aim of the program is early intervention and diverting people away from the risk they may face. Find out more at ltai.info. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with that last sign there. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about this. You know, let's talk about this. <laughs> It makes sense that they work one on one with people, and they say that they tailor it and to help you know, help people. And it really, this this is so obvious to me that this is a propaganda campaign, and it's it's more than that. When they when they when they actually making the effort uh, to more so focus on those at risk and giving them the facilitation and information they need to help support them and bring them over <laughs> to the right side, that is actually indoctrination, which is worse than propaganda. It's forced indoctrination or uh, pressured indoctrination. And when I say forced or coerced or pressured, I mean like they're setting up this whole like neighborhood watch kind of mentality of big brother of people uh, being vigilant and, and reporting and saying and, and pressuring maybe their children or, or their friends or their brothers or saying like, you know, I think you should speak to these people. So they're creating this environment where if you are identified as being a radical and I've already expressed that I believe that even challenging Defin uh, the news about COVID-19, challenging the news about vaccinations and trying to give legitimate information to counteract the facts as they're presented on mainstream media. Even that will be classed as radical, radical activity. Um, that's why I'm concerned here. Okay. And this is about indoctrinating and managing people's uh, mindsets because it's a psyops. It's, it's psychological warfare. Propaganda and indoctrination is. Um... If you can stop them from the get go, which is why this is focusing on children, if they if they can just, you know, totally brainwash the youngest generations of people, then in thirty years time, when those people are the main drivers of the world, uh, there's is the, the the fruits and the dividends are going to be so bountiful. There's going to be so much less resistance. It's, we're at that point now where this has already been happening with people. I'm thirty two years old, and even people were being uh, indoctrinated and, and exposed to heavy doses of propaganda back when I was young. So even now we have people that, uh, you know, they've learned like from school, best and brightest. It's not about questions and answers. It's about giving the right response, the correct answer to a setup prompt, to, to a cue, to, uh, sorry, to a question. But I don't call them questions in schools. They don't ask questions and give answers. They give you setup prompts in order for you to react with the based on the protocol that's been indoctrinated, uh, they give you a prompt to set you up to respond with the correct answer. And then you get called the best and brightest. So people have been conditioned already with this propaganda, this way of thinking that now 
even people that are using their own logic, they're presenting different kinds of data and, and different reasoning uh, to support their argument. People don't even look at it because they, they don't have, they haven't learned some people who have been conditioned so heavily about what it means to, you know, use reason and logic because they rely on what has been written on the board as the facts presented to you by this ordained authority unquestioned. Um, and they literally respond to these people who are using logic with these uh, excerpts and these printed reports and articles, official documentation uh, by mainstream media and the mainstream, uh, you know, industries that people are actually challenging. They use their printed facts and they use it as evidence, okay, to support their case. And you can't, you can't argue their logic because there is no logic. There is no questions or answers in their world. It's simply, we've been told this, and whenever this topic comes up and that setup prompt occurs, the correct response is this. The correct material, the fact, the right answer is this. And it doesn't require thought. It doesn't require ingenuity on one's own part. It just re requires that you refer to the board on what other people, such as people here, are telling you is the correct fact to proliferate. And if you're not repeating that, then yeah. So this is indoctrination. Um, furthermore, for the, you know, to keep for, for future generations of people. Um, yeah. So it's pretty obvious to me. It's pretty obvious to me. Step one, identify individuals being drawn in. Yeah, assess the nature and extent of the risk. Yeah, and then develop a support plan. So it's pretty much saying, it's pretty much is identify angels, individuals who think differently and who question the status quo and who are looking into material on alternative news and alternative media, um, alternative views. And then let's assess the, the nature of what they're looking into. Let's assess the nature of what they believe and let's assess the extent of their belief, the extent of their conviction, the extent of their knowledge, the extent of their certainty in what they know based on how much they've researched. So it's identify those who are looking outside the box. What are they looking at? How much do they know about it? Um, okay, what's, let's develop an appropriate support plan or pretty much a correction plan to recorrect your mind and recorrect your thinking and undo the damage if that's possible. If they can't, they would probably then class you as a risk and you would be very easily, um, you know, if, if you do anything wrong, it could be a strike against your name that you're already classed as a risk and then the consequences on how they would find, uh, you know, proper treatment for you or, uh, you know, um, punishment even could be more severe because you're already deemed a higher risk individual if this condition reconditioning process fails, okay? Uh, yeah, uh, blah, blah, blah. multi-agency panel for development of the most appropriate support package to divert and support the individual at risk. Multi-agency panel. Yeah, so that's what I mean. There's a lot of different things working together in this. And I think it's probably a lot more with their fingers in the mix. If you look at all those independent individual companies and look at people, um, maybe some people that are very well known and pushed into the public spotlight today that might have associations and ties and certain invested stakes in some of these businesses. Because usually you see these businesses and you think, well, that's just that's just that. That's just these businesses. But there's a lot of things that aren't included on, you know, it's like small print you got to look for in terms of who's actually behind these, who's actually the driving forces and investing their money to, to coordinate all this, to create this website, to, to get all these agencies working on a cross panel to identify the risk. Um, who sits on the channel panel? The panel is designed to work the same way as the multi-agent structures that are used to safeguard individuals at risk from drugs to knife, gun crimes, agent, the panel, blah, blah, blah. So the, here, you know, if they were just looking at people that might be um, exposed to true radicalism and terrorism, fair enough. But what I worry about is the distinction and definition of terrorists, and as I've explained. And there's too much gray area there. The only place where gray area is allowed, the only place where overlap is allowed, isn't with the people and their thinking and their communication, but it's with how they define people and their communication and their thinking. Sure, there's a lot of gray area there. They're allowed to be a little bit more ambiguous in determining whether you're a risk or whether you're radical, whether you're, you meet the criteria of being a terrorist potentially. That's a big gray area. Uh, but in terms of, you know, reviewing people's thought and communication, it's very black and white. It's very left and white 
ring. So I don't trust this. Yeah, I do have concerns, but obviously I'd be a fool to call you guys to express them, because then you'd probably deem me to be a radical. Um, all right, so we're going to go make another video at some point talking about this other section they have. Uh, crossing the line, what is, yeah, crossing the line and what is prevent, those two things, uh, where they actually define who's at risk and who's vulnerable. But for now, that's all. That's all we're going to have a look for for now. That's enough propaganda, and uh, the world's just full of it, and this website is full of it, and there's so much more it to expose and, and review, so we'll, we'll go over that in the next video. But until then, take care of yourselves, guys. Um, keep your eye open um, and your eyes closed, meaning don't just believe everything you see, but use your own internal ingenuity and your faculties to decipher and read between the lines, decipher the truth from the lies, um, decipher the lies from our lives. Um, and, you know, the power really resides in your capacity to think for yourself not in other people's ability to tell you how to think, to tell you, not even how to think, but tell you what is the answer. What is the answer on the board? And you being fooled into believing that to be the best and the brightest with everyone else, yay, uh, is to simply repeat on command when prompted that answer on the board. But in your own way, paraphrase, as long as it's the same conclusion. Paraphrase. you got freedom to paraphrase. you got freedom to change the superficial aspects of what is being said, but you can't change the principal point that's being made. That is propaganda. That is very one-sided extreme radicalism. Um, and this site itself, its foundations, uh, is built upon utter hypocrisy. So... Not much merit in it to me. I don't, I don't know how I can take it seriously, but it seems like it's going to have a serious bearings on people and its uh, influence and ability to have an effect on people's lives. So we're going to look into it a bit more because it's important. We shouldn't overlook and just accept things blindly. Like I said, we've got to use our own eye to determine what I think about it. So thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Many blessings.